Hi, I'm Peter Fonda, and you're watching DreadCentral.com. My first Comic Con was, I was 14 years old. Came down from LA on the bus with my buddies, and it was at the El Cortez Hotel, and there were probably 800, 900 people there the whole weekend. That was Comic Con back in the day, baby. And then I get down here every year, actually, because I just love it. I, I love, I come down for a couple of days, I wander the floor, buy some original art, hook up with my buddies. I got a lot of comic book uh, artist, writer friends. The Mist is a, uh, Stephen King's The Mist. It's uh, Frank Darabont. Um, directed and it comes out on Thanksgiving and it's a really kick-ass straight ahead uh, horror film that takes horror seriously you know it plays for real it's not a torture porn it's not it's not uh, uh, some queer ass attempt at making a horror movie it's real it's real and uh, you know in the vein of the exorcist or jaws it uh, takes its story seriously so that's what and I like Frank, about it it's Frank Darabont who every time he works on anything with Stephen King it's the best King, you know, best King movies out there, so it's great to see. I'm so glad he's doing one of his horror stories. I think it's going to be great. What was it like making the leap from, you know, drama to, to horror, The Mist? Um, completely liberating and actually not all that different. Steve King writes, he's always taken it seriously, so you wind up with this incredibly intense, dramatic circumstance that you can put on screen. And so, uh, you know, whether there are monsters lurking outside or not, uh, you wind up with, uh, as a director, with, with a lot of good dramatic stuff to direct, you know, and working with your actors. So, in a way, it's a completely different movie, 180 degrees, but in another way, in the commission of the gig, uh, it's actually not that different, because you're still talking to your actors about, um, you know, human motivation and dramatic believability, and, and why are people behaving like they're behaving. It's still kind of the same, in the fundament of it, it's still kind of the same dramatic family of work, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Uh, hopefully it doesn't sound like arty farty, you know, <laughs> director babble, because it could very well be. But uh, no, as long as, you're, as long as you're in there and you're taking it seriously and the motivational concerns of the story uh, are being treated with respect, might as well not even have monsters in it because it's still a dramatic, you know, muscular piece of work. Yeah, yeah, it's character-driven stuff. I play Amanda. I'm a school teacher. I'm new to town. Um, and when things start unraveling in the mist, I um, ally myself with the main character, David Drayton, and I become a uh, kind of a surrogate to him and his son. She's, um, she's like the female heroine on the good side of the aisle. My initial meeting with Frank about The Mist was literally almost 12 years ago. He's had the project for such a long time period, and creature effects have changed considerably in the last 12 years. So it went from a lot of puppet stuff and miniatures to the stuff that we designed for the film now, which is a lot of CG, a lot of puppet work, a lot of insert pieces. You know, I was fortunate enough to direct Second Unit on the movie as well, so I got to direct a lot of the creature effect sequences. And uh, it, was, it was pretty amazing, you know, I mean, it was a lot of stuff with creating a whole universe of characters and universe of creatures, you know. King's uh, novella is pretty descriptive about what the spiders look like with sort of little grinning human faces on it and the birds have a specific look. And we really, we really wanted to make sure that the designs felt new and felt fresh. We had about six or eight weeks to design all the creatures before we had to start manufacturing. So it was pretty down and dirty, sort of, you know, throwing a bunch of ideas out there and doing different sketches and different clay maquettes and stuff. So 
I think all in all, it, 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 we, I think we came up with some really unique and interesting stuff. What's your favorite creature that appears in the movie? Every time I think of, every, every time I think, oh, well, that's got to be my favorite creature in the movie. Then, uh, like, the next one will be there, and I'll go, no, I love that one. And I don't know. They're all kind of wonderful. The whole point is making sure that people, you don't want them to figure out how you're doing it. You know, you want them to see a shot, and they pan over, and there's a creature there, and then they pan away. And then you come back and the creature suddenly flies away or does something, you know, it's always that sort of sleight of hand. I guess I kind of learned that in my old days with Tom Savini and George Romero because it's all about being a magician. For us, it's all about misdirection. When you, when you think that the audience figures it out and then you throw another curveball at them, then it keeps them guessing. So they, they can't sit there and analyze what kind of movie they're watching because they're, they're not really sure how it's all done. And that's really challenging to do that. So I think with this film we did a great mix of CG and puppet work and creature effects. It was funny because Thomas would laugh at me sometimes because, um, because there was one particular incident where the creatures come in and attack us and I had to do a lot of running and protecting of myself and I started hyperventilating. And uh, Thomas is like, oh my God, and I was like, but it's real to me, it's real to me. I mean, it was exciting to really get into it because um, it's got to be real to you or it's not real to the audience. So uh, it, it's, just, it's just like being a little kid. It's like the ultimate fun of having your imagination and running wild with it. You know, I used a lot of re nature reference. You know, it was, it was interesting looking up pictures of spiders and pictures, you know, there's a... a Somebody sent me an email that had a photo of a camel spider. I don't know if you ever heard of these, but they're absolutely horrific. And I think about a year before we started The Mist, somebody sent me this quick time about, you know, that, that they'll, the spiders will run along and they'll jump up on the underside of a camel and lay eggs in it. And then uh, it was just the most horrific thing because they look like giant face uggers. And I found photos of it and I sent one to Frank and I went, how would you like to wake up with this? in your sleeping bag, which is one of the things that happens in, in Iraq. And oh, and I literally got chills when I saw it. So I sent Frank the photo and he sent it to all the people in his office and they were all mortified. <laughs>